welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2020 ford edge courtesy of bobber's ford in dillsburg pa and so wanted to check this one out today because my sister does own a Ford Edge and she likes it. And so the Ford Edge essentially slots between the Escape and the Explorer. It's kind of in the middle of those. But in addition to that, there's actually several slight changes for 2020. So of course I will be going over them and testing out everything else on this one today. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So, but as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Ford Edge. First one being the SE starting at $31,100. Then you have the SEL for $34,355. Titanium, which goes for $38,100. And then there is the ST or the sportier version starting at $43,265. And so that was pricing all for the front wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, it's really not all that expensive. Only add $720 to any of those prices. Usually other manufacturers charge like somewhere around $2,000 for all wheel drive. So that's kind of cool. But nonetheless, powering the non-ST trim level, like the one we have today is going to be a two liter twin scroll turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 250 horsepower 5500 rpm 280 pound feet of torque available at 3000 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic giving you zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.6 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 21 in the city 29 highway for the front wheel drive 21 city 28 highway for the all-wheel drive and you do also get an auto start stop system with the edge meaning when you're stopped at a red light or a stop sign the engine will turn off automatically for you if that started to annoy you there actually is a button directly behind the circular shifter dial so you can turn that off ultimately if you wanted to but so then the other engine configuration belonging to the st trim level is going to be a 2.7 liter twin turbo v6 335 horsepower approximately 5500 rpm 380 pound feet of torque again approximately 3200 rpm power sent to all four wheels that is actually standard all-wheel drive so you don't need to add 720 dollars for the st eight speed automatic with paddle shifter zero to 60 in 6.1 seconds that's pretty crazy and mpg numbers coming in at 19 in the city 26 on the highway but so that before we do any kind of paddle shifter test or acceleration test in the edge i did want to mention there is a sport driving mode actually that button is located directly in the middle of that circular okay dial immediately downshifts for you so it instantly lunges you forward so that's pretty cool it's going to hold the rpms at a much higher level giving you more power on demand also going to adjust the throttle sensitivity but that was kind of funny that was a very distinct difference there when you press that s button so that's pretty cool but having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and hit a paddle shifter putting us in paddle shift mode here and let's test these things out we'll see how quickly they actually react for us here all right we are in paddle shift mode and here we go eh. yeah okay there's a turn <laughs> Definitely a little bit of a delay to them, honestly. So they're gonna be useful for engine braking when it snows out, perhaps. So really, that's what most people are gonna be using paddle shifters for in an SUV anyway. So really, I probably wouldn't even touch them in the edge because there is a little bit of a delay. So the fun factor is kind of taken away with that. But again, they're there for engine braking. So I'm still glad they are definitely there. Gonna essentially help you from sliding off the road when it's snowy out. You can use the paddle shifters instead of hitting the brakes. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and get set up now for an acceleration test and let me find a straight away and we'll give control back to the edge i'm just going to take it out of that sport driving mode there and let's see how quickly we can get the new 2020 ford edge here up to speed all right and rolling start three two one go baby go not too bad <laughs> yeah that'll work certainly no issues emerging onto the highway i'm sure the st is going to be an absolute blast but that was plenty fine. Plenty of get up and go, plenty of pull. So that was a very nice acceleration. Not the quickest I've ever felt, but certainly plenty nice. But so then to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.4 inch ventilated front discs. If you were to go with the front wheel drive configuration, all wheel drive and the ST trim actually bumps that up to 13.5 inch 
ventilated front disc. So interesting little fun fact there. And there is also an ST Performance package, of course, for that trim level that goes for $2,695. That actually gives you red brake calipers, performance brake pads, and other cosmetic upgrades to go along with that. So I wanted to mention that as well. And in the back of the Edge, 12.4 inch rear discs for the non-ST trim levels like the one we have today, and 13.5 inch rear discs if you were to go with the ST. But as far as that braking feel goes, it's been perfectly fine for me today. So absolutely no issues with coming to a stop. There's no brake pedal delay or anything like that. So that's definitely a plus. Touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension, in the back independent rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. And another thing with the ST trim level, you actually get slightly larger stabilizer bars if you were to go with that route. But ST tuned suspension also with that trim, but I keep touching on the ST. And of course we don't have that one today. So let me speak to the SEL that we do indeed have here today. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine. Definitely soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely, actually. So very impressed there. As far as cabin noise goes, you get a little bit of cabin noise and I got a lot of climate control noise because it's so flipping hot today. But other than that, it's been perfectly fine there as well. No issues for me. Steering feel is a little bit on the looser side. I will say that, but for an SUV, I honestly don't think many people are gonna mind that at all because you know this is a family SUV essentially, but wouldn't have minded a bit heavier of a steering feel to the edge, but perhaps the ST trim level may indeed fix that, but with the SEL, it's definitely a looser feel to it. I did wanna say that. As far as the visibility goes, I can see plenty fine out the back, certainly no issues there. And I did wanna also mention rain sensing windshield wipers do indeed come standard on all trim levels as well. So they're gonna be there for you too. Essentially what that is, is whenever the edge detects any kind of rainfall or mist, they are gonna turn on those windshield wipers for you automatically. One less thing you have to worry about, and that's always a good thing too. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and find a spot and let's take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Ford Edge. All right, here she is, you guys, the new 2020 Ford Edge, finished in agate black or agate black, however you say it. But wanted to touch on the colors real quick to start. Three color deletes and six new colors for the 2020 Edge. The color deletes include Baltic Sea Green, Stone Gray, and White Gold. The new colors for the 2020 Edge include Atlas Blue, Dark Persian Green, Desert Gold, Iconic Silver, Rapid Red, and star white so in case anybody wanted a new color for the 2020 model year but let's go ahead and start up front on the edge here front grille is going to be the same with the exception of the st trim level because that st trim level is actually going to give you a black honeycomb front grille whereas the other ones are going to give you chrome horizontal bars which of course is what you were looking at right now to the sides all trim levels actually get full led headlights full leds i want to specify that because a lot of times cars do come with led headlights but not full led headlights meaning low and high beam so i love that for all trims automatic feature of course comes with that meaning when it starts to get dark out at night ford edge will automatically turn on those headlights for you led fog lights coming standard with the sel trim level and up you guys can see those down below and led daytime running lights also standard across the board so then make your way to the side of this one sel and titanium trim levels will give you roof rails up top there and that is an optional feature on the se trim level if you wanted that option for the se it goes for 165 dollars there rear privacy glass also coming standard across the board black window window surrounds for the SE and ST trim levels chrome window surrounds for the SEL and titanium trims in case anybody was curious there take a look at the side mirrors they are power adjustable black side mirrors for the SE body colored side mirrors for the SEL trim level and up and of course they will come heated with LED integrated turn signals as well definitely looks good there but then take a look down at the bottom 18 inch aluminum alloys coming with the SE and SEL trims 19 inch nickel painted aluminum wheels coming with the titanium and of course the ST bump that up once again bumping it up to 20 inch machined aluminum alloy wheels and of course there are some optional wheel designs available for all trim levels across the board as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the edge here starting at the very top there shark fin antenna as expected just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper as well led tail lights actually come standard across the board love that you got some trim level badging found in the lower right hand corner of the rear tailgate there and just below it all dual exhaust outlets with circular chrome tips at least that is going to be the setup for the non ST trim levels however if you were to go with the ST you get dual exhaust outlets with trapezoidal tips so either way you guys know what we have to do next with our non ST trim level here today as always here is that exhaust clip And 
it's open now since we are round back. When it comes to opening the rear hatch of the Ford Edge, there are a couple different ways you can go ahead and do that. There is, of course, a button on the key fob itself. Press that twice. That is one way to go ahead and open that up. There is also a hands-free foot-activated lift gate if you were to go with the titanium, and that feature is optional for the SEL that we have today. So do want to mention that as well. And of course, there's a button on the hatch itself. So you got a few different options there. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 39.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 73.4 cubic feet, which is actually a good bit for a two-row SUV. Do want to also mention in that cargo area, you can find cargo area LED lighting. There is a cargo management system, also known as in-floor storage, along with the spare tire just underneath of that cargo floor, and that comes standard for all trim levels, by the way. You also have a cargo area 12-volt power outlet back there. There are some grocery hooks, and there's actually some rear ventilation in that cargo area as well so just about everything you could possibly want in the cargo area will be there on the ford edge essentially but so they make our way to the rear legroom that comes in at impressive 40.6 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there really anything over 40 inches is really luxury-esque at that point Heated rear seats are optional if you wanted that. Rear ventilation does come standard on all trim levels. And you can find a 110 volt power outlet in that second row if you were to go with the titanium or the ST trim level. And of course, it's gonna be optional on the SEL, of course, that we have today. And there is a 12 volt power outlet right next to that as well. And make our way to the front seats. 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with a cloth finish comes with the SE. SEL trim level is going to add a six-way power adjustable passenger seat, heated front seats, and active X seating material. Titanium trim level gives you memory settings along with full leather seating. And ventilated front seats with a perforated leather is going to be an added option for $2,875 if you wanted that. And lastly, the ST is going to give you full leather seating with Miko suede inserts along with the ST badging towards the top of those seats as well but i will say in our sel trim level today not only are the seats plenty comfortable but the headrests themselves they are some of the softest headrests honestly i felt in quite a while they're like a pillow essentially a lot of headrests these days are super firm for some reason which i really don't like but these headrests they're super soft i like that anyways making our way to the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the sel trim level and up and it will come heated for the titanium trim level also optional on the SEL and ST trim levels. We actually do have that option as well today. Then make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. Do you have your Ford logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch and the times two button there in the middle, that is going to be your remote start. So all you need to do is simply make sure the vehicle is locked, press that twice. It's gonna start up for you so you can possibly cool down on super hot days in Pennsylvania like today. But nonetheless, what I'm going to do now is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so, but then once started up, speedometer is front and center. You have two smaller digital gauge clusters to the left and the right. Cool thing about that is to adjust what is on those two gauge clusters, there are steering wheel mounted controls on the left side to adjust the left side, that makes sense, and steering wheel mounted controls on the right side to adjust the right side. So I love how Ford made that super easy and super simple for everybody. You could check out tons of different information up there, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, trip A, trip B, outside temperature, the list goes on. So plenty of information you can check out up there. Then make your way to overall interior quality. Dual zone climate control comes standard across the board along with the overhead sunglass holder found on the roof there. Panoramic Vista roof is gonna be optional for the SEL titanium and ST trim levels. That is a $1,600 option if you wanted to go that route. Ambient lighting is going to come with the titanium and ST trim levels, so therefore we don't have that today. Universal garage door openers, again with those two trim levels, and wireless phone charger, again with those two. We do have the universal garage door openers, though. That's an option as well for the SEL, but that's going to be found for up to three different garage doors found on the driver's side sun visor up top there. But overall, it's pretty much finished as you would expect the Ford Edge to be finished. I will say there is a good bit of hard plastic surrounding the infotainment screen just below that where the climate control is and just in front of the shifter. So that's all pretty much plastics right there, but really that's my only gripe on this thing. Everything else is pretty nice. There is an electromechanical parking brake just behind the circular dial and shifter there. There's also some rubberized storage just above the infotainment screen. Wanted to mention that too. So that's always nice. There is what appears to be a cell phone holder just behind the cup holders, and there is a massive amount of storage within that center armrest as well. So 
definitely finished quite nicely for the Ford Edge. But now let's make our way to the tech display. Eight inch color touchscreen display comes standard for all trim levels. That is gonna be Ford Sync 3 system. Bluetooth and audio streaming comes with that along with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Meaning if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Edge and you can do a free navigation through that smartphone. Displayed up on that screen in front of you there. Factory navigation system is gonna be optional. Ambient lighting adjustments can be had up there if your vehicle is equipped with them climate control settings up there as well and your radio settings and this is the fun part for me when it comes to the sound systems which we will test out here in a second six speakers with the se nine speaker sound system with the sel which is new for 2020 used to be six speakers for the sel now has nine speakers so that's one of the changes there any 12 speaker bang and olsen sound system with the titanium and st trim levels so let's go ahead and test out the new sound system here for 2020 being the nine speaker one so Turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, it feels like a good bit more speakers. The clarity was actually very nice. It feels like it's coming at you from all directions. Good bit of bass. Really, that nine speaker sound system is plenty fine for me. I would have no issues with that whatsoever. But so then last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Ford Edge in reverse, you will find a rear view camera across the board letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. It's the first thing I wanted to mention on the safety side of things. The 2020 Ford Edge is an IIHS top safety pick. So that is a plenty good start right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard along with driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks can be found back there as well. Tire pressure monitoring system and all trim levels also give you Ford Copilot 360. This is going to be a safety suite of a ton of different safety features, including automatic high beams, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, lane keeping system, pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking as well. Well, and there is an optional Ford Copilot 360 Assist Plus package. It goes for $795. That one gives you adaptive cruise control with stop and go and lane centering, evasive steering assist, and a factory navigation system actually comes with that as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the 2020 Ford Edge, the ST engine option is going to be brilliant in this thing, although we didn't have it today. Top safety pick is definitely a huge plus, especially if you have kids. Ambient lighting is a plus, again, although we don't have it today. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, I love. And so in the end, the Ford Edge is in a very crowded segment. There are plenty of different options out there. There's the Hyundai Santa Fe, Honda CRV, there's Toyota RAV4. There's really so many different options here, but Ford Edge is definitely a very solid pick, especially considering that IHS top safety pick as well. So let me know what you guys think of the Edge in the comments section below there. That is about it for this one, you guys, though. Thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold.